had to see like Crocky play. Uh, yeah, Crocky <laughs> is is always the person that comes to mind. There's there's a lot of there's a not a lot, but there's a few high ticket names that talk about the potential of Arcadia and the frustrations of fighting against a legend like Arcadia because she has some very unique signatures in her kit with the ability to place what are essentially traps that you can get caught in, and then she can follow up with whatever uh, attack that she chooses when it comes to light attacks from the spear or from from the great sword. So we'll have to see how that plays out here. As Fiend's basically picked up this giant heavy weapon. And it's been getting kicked around this entire game so far. And there's one of those traps that you were talking about, but something that Arcadia also has is one of those staple standard Brawlhalla weapons. Just yeah. like Jay Yun has the regular sword that everyone's comfortable with, Fiend here with the spear, something he is one of the most comfortable players with I would in the say, entire world. Yeah, I would say the best spear player, if not top two. Uh, Fiend's spear has always been pushing the meta for that weapon, and, and Arcadia seems like a great pick if great sword is something that he believes is the answer to Wes's boot. So I'm very excited to see this matchup continue out here uh, as we're getting into game number one, whereas Wes is really just taking complete control of the game so far. These neutral light openers are just not hitting, and Wes is jumping all around Fiend as he kicks him off to the right side of the stage and looks to catch another landing there with that side light. It's, it's looking like he's got to get off the great sword. He does swap over onto the spear with the weapon spawn that came in on that soft platform. He's staying high over here against Wes, but Wes is chasing him into the air. They are even, except Fiend is a full stock behind Wes. Oh, and Wes using the active input on the side light, or the side air to go all the way to the other side of the stage and then slide charge. <gasps> Wes is crazy. He no the way! Fiend just completely unaware of the distance of that neutral signature riding up the side of the stage. Wes was just using it as a recovery tool, but he ends up getting the hit. And when that move connects, you get the spike as well. Fiend now down one stock to three as Wes comes back from what I was almost certain was him losing his stock to a Pogo Edge Guard. And Fiend, even with a well-placed neutral signature, does not take Wes off the top of the stage. A Spear Sare will have to do it for the first stock of the game for Fiend. Weapon spawn came in. He didn't really have time to juggle as Wes was spawning back in. So I don't know if he wanted to just deny the weapon or if he wanted to go back over to the great sword. He's going to get punished. Only finds one hit there. Oh. Okay, got a three piece. Rare. Let's see. Gets that neutral light off of the weapon throw. Wes playing some gauntlets in a way that I haven't seen for quite a bit in singles. The neutral lights are coming through. And despite it ha having that knockout power that it used to have, it's still really great for setting up strings. Uh, but the side airs are just batting Wes away. And Fiend is coming back into this game, number one. Side light opener gets that nice neutral air. Two nairs in a row. Goes for the neutral signature. If you charge a little bit, you get that extra bit of distance. And he's putting the down six down, hoping to catch him so they can maybe get a stair follow up afterwards. But that side air comes out from West means that Fiend might have to use that recovery to get back on the stage. Side light goes in for that slide charge pivot down sig. Fiend disarmed, has to avoid West's recovery. It's going to hit. It's not going to knock out. And that neutral sig might just do it. Yeah, dumps him straight into the stage and sent flying off the right side. West with a really strong game one, but I do feel like Fiend got caught a little bit off guard. Uh, on, on the first stock, he just got trounced by the boots, but on the second stock, he was like actually just caught off guard in this moment here, right? Stuff recovery. What's West gonna do to make it back? Fiend goes for a second pogo in the midst of the swing, gets caught by the leap from that neutral signature. And speaking about leaping with a neutral signature, the Gauntlets do it there as well with that two stock in game number one. Fiend not switching off the Arcadia. Wow. Though. I do I do feel like that first game just caught Fiend off guard, and he's he's like, okay, that's right, this is Wes. He's got that really fast, hot-headed temperament when it comes to fighting in 1v1s. I just have to adapt to it. So let's see what happens here in game number two. So if we're looking at legend levels for this Arcadia from Fiend, it is level 34. So far beyond the actual like threshold that we really kind of look for. Once you hit that level 25, that's mostly what we're looking for when we have top players, especially when they get to like a new character, a or at least a new character for them in their stable, which this seems like it might be as that sort of Battle Boots counterpick. Unfortunately for Fiend though, still not really finding the juice on that counter pick but we are starting off somewhat differently this game Wes no. has the damage lead but we're about 40 seconds almost into this Stuff game recovery, that it's might be it. starting to come apart Ooh. Fiend's able to get in oh but the down light he goes for the jump read and he ends up not spacing it correctly avoids the weapon toss there comes Wes with the gauntlets but man Fiend losing that spear like that's pretty dramatic and that side lane to recovery will take that first stock under a minute 
next weapon that Fiend's going to pick up is going to be that great sword that he really hasn't found too much success with here against Wes. If we're looking at last game, like he dealt 65% of his damage with the great sword, but that's because he had it like the entire game. He relied so much of that and still could only put out 245 with it compared to 30 on spear and 59 unarmed. Yeah. Falling Cider comes in the downer, gets dodged out of the way, and West just isn't getting hit by a single move from Fiend on the Greatsword. Nair comes through, gravity cancel down like Cider. Fiend low on jumps, has to go all the way out in there. West chases him a little haphazardly there. He went really deep for it, and if he hit that side air, I mean, that was a three stock to one situation. He would have been able to chase dodge directly up and then be able to get his dodge back in time to make it back to the stage. Down sig into side air, neutral light. Those are those combos that I was talking about where you get those unique situations where the move that you're putting out is to catch your opponent so that you can get unique strings to Arcadia that other legends might not be able to get. Um, and now we've seen Fiend connect with them both on the Greatsword and the Spear, but Wes hits that neutral light. Needs a stronger hit than that to be able to get the stock, but he's super far ahead here in the second stock. He's playing really far back over on that wall. Like he knows that Fiend can just pop up, throw a side air over the corner, and Wes is not going to have any range on the gauntlets to be able to deal with it. You see, the second he gets those battle boots, yeah. finds the stock, and he's almost a full stock lead up yet again. Fiend going to be without a weapon here. Spawn comes in. He's still able to grab it as Wes try to continue the string on the gauntlets. Yeah, that was a, and that punish was on uh, a spear and air, which maybe a patch ago could have hit. Uh, the, the Nair does not quite hit as far out on its radius as it used to. Um, and that could be costing Fiend a little bit of muscle memory there. But the great oh, sword the with the dare to recovery, any other stage, the ceiling may have been low enough. Fiend putting up that down signature to put Wes into the air, looking for the Nairs of recoveries here. That pickup recovery, you fast fall down, go for the recovery. It comes out at a delay, but covers the entirety of the ground. Is coming through here, and Wes has to dodge out of the way of the down stick. Fiend's got all the pressure at the moment, but the boots picked up, gets sared away. Can he even up the game? Yes, oh. Sparky, that dares enough with the knockback just to take Wes out completely. And this is the clutch factor. This is why you can never count out Fiend. Uh, this is why, this is a perfect example of how many times I've been wrong yeah. by not putting Fiend in my top three. Even though he may end up falling here and not getting that top three finished, you're seeing the clutch factor activate right in front of our eyes. Ooh. He's using those traps from Arcadia no and attacking through them. Nair? He's finding the strings on Greatsword. Oh, and the silence are coming through down like it's the side air. Fiend put off the side of the stage. Gravity cancel means West with no dodge. Manages to slip back onto stage, and the down sticks are forcing West to be airborne. West could go for like a dash jump. Gravity cancel down light, but just the neutral light hits in an edge guard scenario here. Goes for that side air. D light Sarah. That'll do it. West takes game number two, but Fiend with the adaptations to his game plan are making it look like that a game three win is possible if he sticks to the Arcadia. We just have to find out whether or not he feels as confident as that because West had a dead even split on damage between the two weapons. Just, just a two damage difference. A little bit in favor of the Gauntlets. The signs of life are there for Fiend, for sure. The EKG is still going. Maybe in game three or the next game that we have in front of our very eyes, Fiend will figure out exactly what he needs to do. We may see him swap legends. We may see him stick with the Arcadia mm -hmm. because the Arcadia that game was different than the Arcadia in the previous game. Yeah, yeah. Fiend's really great at adapting his play style and his game plan in general. Um, we saw, once again, a large percentage of the damage actually coming in from the Greatsword here as opposed to the Spear, despite the Spear being what I thought would be the strength uh, for Fiend going into this matchup. And now I'm curious if he thinks that against Wes, I, I'll be real with you, I don't think Fiend wins the the uh, the Tesca Mirror match against Wes. I think Wes is by far the best Tesca that I've been watching so far this weekend for Winter Championship. I would agree. Uh, and so I'm curious if that's what Fiend was, is thinking about right now or if he's gone over to the Atori. I've seen Fiend in a lot of these 0-2 situations where he thinks really hard about what he has to pick before he goes into the next game. And that is never a legend that I've seen him say. Uh, that's, that is, that's, I think that's Sentinel. definitely not one that I would have put my money on as a possibility Wait. for Fiend. Taza and I can see it right now. You likely will see it shortly, but it is... One of the Qatar legends we talked about previously, yeah, and Sentinel. It's, it is the one where, uh, with Sentinel, in his case, I was talking about how the uh, Qatar players like to have around six decks. You either have like a base five and you go into six, or with Asura, you have seven, so you can go down to six. Um, or if you're crazy and you like to go for amazing combos, you go for Lin Fei and you just go to nine. Uh, this is a three-deck Sentinel, which means that 
Wes is going to zero to death. Okay, 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 okay. He makes it back to the stage. <laughs> Fiend comes back. So there's a few things that Sentinel can do that's different than a lot of other legends. One, I mean, it's a hammer legend. We haven't seen too much of that. But also with the guitars, something uh, that is popularized by Wubs in North America is the down yep. signature. He just you showed it to us. You side light, you get them barely off stage, you go for that down signature, and you can get that spiking hitbox right in the center to catch people off guard. And also, it's just kind of a good move to use all the time in Absolutely. Um, so we'll see if Fiend uh, has some tricks up his sleeve with this, because this was by far not the legend that I was expecting him to play uh, against West there, but the side to gets the punish, and Fiend takes the first lead that he's had all set. I'm sure Wrenched is going to be happy seeing at least another Qatar legend yeah. being played today, because he was very critical, saying, hey, there are more Qatar legends than just a Surrey. Right. Everybody out there playing just a Surrey is missing a magical part of Qatar's. Fiend is here showing up for Sentinel. Uh, I believe the next weapon is going to be Hammer, or is it Prime for Qatar's? We're not, well, we have to find out if Wes even lets him pick up another one. There's a good spawn, goes all the way back for it. Qatar's were primed indeed, and he goes up with a, I thought it was going to be a falling there, but instead Wes just comes back, stares him. Oh, nice job with the side light as well. Putting out the down six, damage going back and forth, slightly in favor of Fiend so far as he's getting that landing with a neutral signature, and Fiend's had a very signature-heavy playstyle so far. Neutral light recovery comes through, and he's hitting pretty hard on the Sentinel. Down sig is so good there. Honestly, on Demon Island, what do you do? You, just, you can just down sig again. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of space for Wes to maneuver around those possible incoming signatures from Fiend, but seeing how many signatures he's using and how many he's landing mm -hmm. makes me feel really confident on the knockout ability of Fiend that he really struggled with on Arcadia. Finding those great sword KOs can be tough sometimes, and even fighting against Wes with the spear, he was struggling to find KOs as well. So I'm already feeling much better about this pick than I did it with the Arcadia. Oh, are we going to see our first stop, Saren, like <laughs> forever? <laughs> it's, been, it's been a minute. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not, Sparky. That, that boots down air comes through. Uh, pretty sure it does less damage than an unarmed air, but that doesn't matter because you get that extra bit of reach and that extra bit of knockback. And Wes is such a fan of the down sig combo starter. I don't remember if after this patch, if it's true or not, but like you could do a lot off of getting it down. Okay, Gravity catches down sick again. He's gonna go for it one more time. Fiend gets the recovery and chase out his back. Fiend has to get the stock here, Sparky. Okay, he gets it. Now he has a chance. Otherwise, Wes is on the verge of winning 3-0 and moving into top four here in the Winter Championship. You see the weapon juggle coming out. Fiend trying to focus on that weapon starving game. Wes is able to grab it right after taking a three piece. The string is continuing to come out from Fiend. The weapon toss there. You saw him run away the other direction using every bit of movement speed that Sentinel has to get away from it, and Wes is going to fall off of that? Okay. Wes falls off of that amazing job from Fiend. Solidly in the lead with damage towards the end there, and honestly in the lead the entire game. Yeah, you saw the character model darken there towards the end. I really want to look at that final stock. Oh. Hopefully we can get some nice uh, shalomo Zero on that. hammer damage. <laughs> Zero. We saw him have hammer in his hand for a moment. He got taken out Zero. immediately. So we are, uh, I don't think we're going to see. How many times can we tell Snowy to screenshot it? I yeah, don't know. Hey, <laughs> hey Snowy, tweet, tweet that one out too, dog. What, you get on that I, one actually, I cannot believe he didn't hit him once. He tried to hit him with hammer. He had, I guess he lost his, every time he lost the stock, he had hammer in hand. That's like, well, you know, it, it, Fiend hasn't been, actually, that's not true. Fiend kind of had a nasty Nash for a while. Uh, here we go into this next game. So, it's now two to one. Wes uh, doing really well so far into this game, and the ground or in the down to comes out there from the gauntlets and is doing really well as well. We're seeing them go here on to small brawl haven. Fiend is going to start off with the Qatars. That's exactly what he's going to be wanting. Definitely off of last game. Seeing zero hammer damage coming out. But okay, Fiend grabbing an orange KO right off the top. The signature kit that he's using. This is why he's playing Sentinel, man. This is why we love Sentinel as a legend, especially when we're doing commentary. In my ranked games, I hate Sentinel. Yeah. But right now, I am loving the Sentinel. Well, and it, it's, it's pretty interesting, too, because there's a lot lot of thought and commentary that goes into a weapon kit and sometimes it can be ignored that yes uh, every legend in the game does have a unique signature kit and the things that they cover can work really well depending on the matchups and what we're seeing here is that fiend has well until that size of it uh used sentinel signatures to punish a lot of uh 
game plan options that Wes has been picking to go in, like if he goes in for a Sizek with a gauntlet, the Katara Sizek punish that perfectly. Uh, Fiend's using the Katara's neutral signature, which he tried to go for right there, but the fact that Wes keeps liking the land right on top of him. And he's like, okay, if you're gonna land on top of me, I'll show you exactly what you're gonna get for that. Uh, Wes really adapting well with the boots here onto center stage. Um, and that Sizek tried to catch a landing that didn't quite work out, but if I know anything about that weapon spawn, he's not switching over to the hammer anytime soon. He really just wants to get all the damage up the guitars and then get a really solid signature hit to take the lead. Yeah, it's really been so many signatures that he's found the KOs with. He's not really finding too many recovery KOs. He's not looking for the down light into the double recovery or anything like that whatsoever. He's playing Sentinel. That means he's looking specifically for those signatures. Other players might also look to the hammer for those stomp siders, maybe some of those gigantic signatures on the hammer like the side sig. But no, for Fiend, he's looking for the signature kit on the Qatar specifically. He's playing this legend for the Qatar specifically. I love how every time he picks up the hammer, I just, <laughs> I, just, I just know he's like, all right, I'm just doing it. You know, it's not it's not the the craziest strategy. It reminds me of like like sometimes we would watch like uh, the first person the players co comes to mind is North American player cost, like yes. where like he would pick up his non lance weapon when he knew he was about to lose the stock and be like, well, I might as well prime. The weapon that I want this way. But let's see, Fiend. Can he get his first hammer damage the entire day? No, if Fiend, he gets knocked please, out here. Please, that's no. so funny. Oh, no. <laughs> Is Wes going to win off of that? No way, dude. Oh, I. Oh, no. I am so mad. Oh, no. That hurts so bad I, to see. Oh, I'm broken. He just wanted one hit. He just wanted, he's like, he's like come on, Taz, I can do it. I can hit with the hammer. Look at me. <laughs> Wes I... fast falls to get off screen to be able to escape the down air coming in from Fiend. Oh, Taz, no. I can't go on. I'm broken, dude. I can't, I can't see that. We were loving the Sentinel. Everything was. Can we see the good. damage numbers really quick? It's Wait, where is it? Where is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can look behind you. I don't want to. <laughs>